The recent announcement by Toyota that it was cutting 350 jobs was more bad news for an industry that's already struggling to compete. Australia took a major step forward in its industrial development. It was 1948 and the first Australian-made car, the Holden FX, had just hit our roads. It was a model made and adjusted for our local conditions. It wasn't just what the Americans had designed and put on a shelf as a design exercise. The FX was a source of great pride for all Australians. Holdens and Falcons following have oftentimes been tremendously good for Australia's rural road conditions as well as city, which is why they were so popular for so long. But more recently, our love affair with Australian-made cars has soured, and a question mark hangs over the future of the industry. The high Aussie dollar is making imports um, dramatically cheaper, and as a consequence, making it difficult to compete against those overseas imports. But economist Oliver Mark Hartwich thinks the problems in the car industry run deeper, and there's nothing governments or workers can do about it. The problem for the Australian car industry is simply that it's catering for a small domestic market, whereas car industries in other countries, for example the Europeans, always cater for a market of half a billion consumers. And therefore we simply don't have the economies of scale necessary to run a successful car industry. Last year fewer than 250,000 vehicles were built by the three Australian car manufacturers. An output that's dwarfed by the likes of China, Japan and the US, who between them produce around 35 million cars each year. The Australian industry is heavily reliant on subsidies for its survival. The federal government alone has committed $3.4 billion to car and component manufacturers until 2020. And the South Australian and Victorian governments also provide financial assistance. But critics say the money's being wasted. The problem with propping up the car industry is if it's quite obvious that it can't survive in the long term, all of this money that we're throwing into the car industry is just throwing in good money after bad. But for the men and women who make Australian cars, the argument is about more than dollars and cents. Brendan and Kerry Sexton met at Ford's Geelong plant and between them have given over 40 years of service to the car maker. Working at Ford's has been a big part of my life and it's provided a roof over our heads and been able to take children to school and provide all the normal things you need to do. But the growing uncertainty means that careers in car manufacturing are now filled with doubt. Ford is committed to producing cars in Geelong, Victoria until 2016. But beyond that date, workers like Brendan, who spent his entire working life in the industry, are left guessing. That makes me 52 and I don't know if I've got much of a future beyond 2016. They can't tell us beyond a certain time frame if we're going to still be there, if we're still going to have jobs, if Ford's still going to make cars in Australia. We would struggle to survive, still have a mortgage to pay, still have bills to pay. Um, both of us unemployed, uh, the money would run out reasonably quick if we couldn't find another job. The car industry will always have a special place in Australia. Like They, they say that it, it builds up a skills base that then works right across the economy and so mm -hmm. they won't let it go. Um, they don't call it, by the way, protection or bailouts, they call it co-investment in this country. And every country subsidises their car industry, they don't do. they? Yeah. 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 But some are just more profitable than yeah. others. You can't make cars at a price that people can afford. Mm -hmm. mm.